if you've tried store-bought 10 can mushrooms and hated the metallic taste and rubbery texture, don't think that's what you'll get when you home can your own mushrooms. Home can mushrooms are delicious, aromatic, fresh tasting, and retain every quality of their texture and mushroom flavor. Oh, and they're super easy to can. In this video, I'll share my quick tips on how you can can your own fresh or store-bought mushrooms. But first, be sure to check that your equipment is in working order, and I've left a link in the description box below so you know exactly how to do that. All right, let's get to it. But if we haven't met, I'm Cassandra. I work full-time as a school administrator by day and love digging my hands in the dirt or dough at night, turning our eighth of an acre townhome into an urban homestead. This channel documents the skills that I'm cultivating as I plan my escape to the country in just four years. So if you have homestead dreams, but your feet are on both sides of the grass, consider subscribing. Here's what you'll need. French onion soup mix. This brand is from Aldi and is tasty and inexpensive. All-purpose seasoning, for an optional chicken flavor boost, I use ramen noodle seasoned salt, fresh or dried herbs of your preference, any variety of white button type mushrooms, a jar lifter and plastic spatula, white vinegar, large stock pot, quart or pint sized canning jars, new lids and rings, and a pressure canner. Mine is a 1960s vintage canner named Edna. If you're not using pre-packaged mushrooms like I am, you'll want to trim off and discard stem ends and any discolored parts. You can leave small mushrooms whole, but cut up large ones. Then, using a colander or a large bowl, use cold water to thoroughly rinse your mushrooms to loosen any dirt and wash your mushrooms. Next, you'll fill a large stock pot with water and bring it to a boil. I highly recommend using French onion soup packets to create a quick, delicious broth. Now, I like to save my chicken flavor packets to infuse a subtle chicken flavor into the broth. Yes, there's salt in these packets, but this is all the salt we'll be using. Add your mushrooms and allow them to softly boil for seven to 10 minutes or until moderately tender. And if you're using fresh herbs like I am, go ahead and add them here. Using a bowl and strainer setup, I like to separate the cooked mushrooms from the broth so that I can pack the jars full of mushrooms first, then pour in the broth. I don't know about you, but I love building up my food storage and creating my own convenience food for when I'm in a pinch or want to enjoy something that's not in season or not on sale. It just Ugh, makes me feel so accomplished. And y'all, finding a shortcut to create a delicious broth makes this recipe no fuss and delicious. Okay, so you all know I love assembly line setups in the kitchen, so here's how I place everything. It's less stressful when you have everything at your fingertips. Now go ahead and add your mushrooms to the jar, remembering to save one inch of headspace. And you don't have to use a funnel, but it is convenient. Now pour over that delicious broth. The same rules apply about headspace. You can use the rims around the jars as an easy measure. After you have filled your jars, remove any air pockets by sliding a narrow, non-metallic item between the jar and the contents. You don't want to scratch the surface of your glass jars. 
In a pinch, I've used an orange peeler or plastic chopsticks, but a small spatula or other instrument also works. And for added measure, you'll want to run your finger around the rim of each jar to ensure there are no cracks or chips that might prevent a seal. You'll also want to wipe each rim with a wet cloth to ensure a strong, clean seal and vinegar does just the trick. Next, you'll add a brand new sealing lid and ring to each jar. You'll secure the rings using the fingertip tight method, which just means that you're not looking to use the strength of your wrists as you screw on the rims. The pressure from your fingertips is all it takes. This allows the lids to have some room to vent as they process, which creates the seal. And yes, I had extra broth, which was no problem. I simply pulled some jars and filled them with some fresh green beans I had on hand and separately canned those. Yum, have you ever had green beans in a chicken French onion broth? It's so tasty. I used the remaining broth in place of water to cook my brown rice for dinner and it added so much flavor. Let's move to our pressure canner. My canner is a dial gauge canner. Place the rack in and add enough hot water to cover the jars at around a quarter of their height. I use my electric kettle to heat the water. Then add your jars and more water if necessary. Next, put the lid on your canner. To ensure that it's closed and locked, look for markings on your canner. Your canner won't reach temperature if the lid is not securely closed. Remember, the processing time doesn't start until the pressure canner vents a steady stream of steam for 10 minutes and reaches the right poundage. I live in Maryland and require 10 pounds of pressure. The processing time for mushrooms is 45 minutes, irregardless of the size of the jars you're using. I placed this cardboard box behind the vent so you could hopefully see the steady stream of steam I referenced earlier. Everything is looking and sounding good. So then you'll add your weight and watch for the pressure to build as indicated by the dial. Once it does, the timer begins and I usually use the timer on my phone or oven. Glass stovetops are more temperamental than gas stoves when it comes to regulating the pressure, so keep an eye on your pressure through the full duration of the processing time. Once your jar is finished processing for 45 minutes, make sure you cut the heat and allow your canner to completely cool to touch. Lift the lid away from your face so that any remaining steam doesn't burn you. Place and cover the jars with a towel for 12 hours. Jars cool, you'll hear the lids making clicking pops as they seal. To confirm the lids were sealed, remove the ring and tap on the lid. If it pops back up, your jar isn't sealed. When the lids seal, they become concave and your jars will mostly seal within a few hours of cooling. If you have a jar or two that didn't seal, store them in the fridge and enjoy them within a week or so. I also like to write the name of the item, the date that it was canned, and the price I paid per pound. Congrats, you did it. I told you it was super easy. I don't know about you, but of all the homestead skills I've learned, canning has been the most satisfying. To see more of my videos, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Bye.